In this lesson, we're going to take a look at equivalent trigonometric expressions and listed on the right side here are what are called the cofunction identities, which relate sine and cos or tan and cotan or cosecant and secant. So for example, and these cotan identities are all, all have exactly the same pattern, that sine and cosine are related this way. The sine of any angle is the cosine of pi over 2 minus that angle. Same with cosine. The cosine is of any angle is the sine of pi over 2 minus that angle. And the same is true with tan and cotan and cosecant and secant. Now what we're going to do in B here is we're going to find the equivalent expression for the cosine of pi over 3. So what we're going to do then in A here is take pi over 2 because all of these are pi over 2 minus an angle and subtract pi over 3 from it. Now in order to, uh, and, and that's how we'll actually find an equivalent cosine expression for, sorry, sine expression for the cosine of pi over 3. In order to subtract these, we need to, to get a common denominator, which of course is 6. So we'll multiply the pi over 2 by 3 top and bottom, and the pi over 3 by 2 top and bottom. And then we'll get 3 pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 6, which of course is just pi over 6, or 1 pi over 6. So since that simplifies to 1 pi over 6, so this second from the top cofunction identity is the one I'm using here. So think of the pi over 3 as the x. Uh, the cosine of pi over 3 then is equal to the sine of pi over 2 minus the pi over 3. That pi over 3 would be the same as this pi over 3. So that's why the cosine of pi over 3 is equal to the sine of pi over 2 minus pi over 3. Well, up here we found that pi over 2 minus pi over 3 is pi over 6, so this simplifies to pi over 6. So the cosine of pi over 3 is equivalent to the sine of pi over 6. And you can see that from, this is the first quadrant from the unit circle, the uh, cosine of pi over 3, cosine is the x-coordinate, so that's equal to a half. And the sine of pi over 6, there's the pi over 6 angle, so it's this point, and the sine is the y-coordinate, so they're both equal to 1 half, so they must be equivalent. Moving over to example two, here's some uh, different identities. The all ones in the last page were all always uh, pi over two minus an angle. In this case, we're adding uh, x or some unknown angle to pi over two instead of subtracting. And so now you have to pay attention here. Some of these, they are the same sign, some are opposite signs, and it just depends on the particular trig function. So for example, the sine of x plus pi over two is the same as the cosine of x. But the cosine of x plus pi over 2 is the negative sine of x. So the decimal amount or the radical amount would be the same, but they're opposite in sign. Uh, for the tan and cotan, both of them have the negative relationship. For the cosecant and secant, and that's because of the fact that cosecant and secant are related very similar to the way sine and cosine are. Remember, uh, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, and secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So the cosecant of x plus pi over 2 is the same as the secant of x, but the secant of x plus pi over 2 is the negative of the cosecant of x. Now in the example 2a, we're going to simplify uh, pi over 3 plus pi over 2. So it's an angle plus pi over 2. So we're adding an angle to pi over 2. And uh, so if we do that, again, we need a common denominator. So we multiply this one by 2 in numerator and denominator, and this one by 3. And so that simplifies to... Uh, 3 pi over 6 and 2 pi over 6. This is actually the 3 pi over 6 and this is the 2 pi over 6. For some reason I wrote them in the opposite order. But it still adds to 5 pi over 6. So because these two angles add to 5 pi over 6, and this leads into uh, the, the B part here, we're asked to write an equivalent expression for the tan of 5 pi over 6. Well, the tan 5 pi over 6 can be broken down into pi over 2 plus pi over 3. So, um, so because the 5 pi over 6 can be written as pi over 3 plus pi over 2, well, this is the identity I'm using here. So the x is the pi over 3. So this is pi over 3, so it should equal the negative of the cotan of pi over 3. So those x's are the same. If this is pi over 3, then that's uh, pi over 3. So the tan of 5 pi over 6 is equivalent to the negative of the cotan of pi over 3. And we could actually show that in the unit circle. If we evaluate the tan of 5 pi over 6, well, there's the angle 5 pi over 6. So um, that's the cos, that's the sine. So if we divide them, 
uh, remember sine over cos, so uh, half over the negative root 3 over 2. The uh, 2 is in the denominator, divide out, and you get uh, uh, 1 over negative root 3, or negative 1 over root 3. If we evaluate the cotan of pi over 3, well there's pi over 3. Cotan is the reciprocal of tan, so it's equal to cosine over sine. So to evaluate negative cotan pi over 3, we'll take the, uh, for pi over 3, we'll take the cosine value and divide it by the sine value. So it's negative, uh, a half divided by root 3. Again, the 2's divide out, and we're left with negative 1 over root 3, which is the same as what we have up here. So they are certainly equivalent. In example number 3, we're given that the cotan, cotan of 6 pi over 5 is equal to the negative of the tan of some unknown angle we'll call z. And we're asked to write 6 pi over 5 as the sum of pi over 2, so we're referring back to those uh, identities in the, in the second previous page, as the sum of pi over 2 and some other unknown angle in order to find uh, z. So we're going to find that unknown angle. So this is the identity we're using. So uh, the cotan, okay, the 6 pi over 5 is going to be broken down into some unknown angle plus pi over 2. Uh, in the second previous page, this was called x. We'll call it z here. So in order to find that unknown angle, this 6 pi over 5 must equal this. And so in order to find what z is, we'll take the pi over 2 away from the 6 pi over 5, and that will give us the unknown angle z. We would need a common denominator, so the common denominator would be 10, so we'll multiply this by 2 top and bottom, and this one by 5. And then we'll have 12 pi over 10 equals z plus 5 pi over 10. So z would have to be 12 pi over 10 minus 5 pi over 10 is 7 pi over 10. So the unknown angle would be 7 pi over 10. To demonstrate with a calculator that these quantities are the same, if we uh, uh, 6 pi over uh, 5, if we see uh, this is actually evaluating with the scientific calculator the cos cotan of 6 pi over 5. Remember cotan and tan are reciprocals, so uh, you cannot do the cotan of any angle directly in the calculator, so you would evaluate 1 over the tan of that angle. So that's evaluating what's on the left here. And you get 1.37638192, etc. Uh, on the right we actually have the negative tan of the z angle, which is the 7 pi over 10, and this calculation shows that to uh, 8 decimal places it is exactly the same as the one above it. So just demonstrating that they are equivalent. Uh, last example, in example 4 here, we're given that the cosecant of 3 pi over 10 is equal to approximately 1.2361. And we're asked to find the following, these two quantities here, these two secants. Remember, cosecant and secant are related by those identities. Now, in one of these, uh, it's going to be pi over 2 plus an angle, and the other one is the minus 1 from the first page. So, if we were to take pi over 2 and add 3 pi over 10, getting a common denominator. If we multiply this one by 5 top and bottom, this one already has the 10 uh, common denominator. Uh, that gives us uh, 8 pi over 10, which of course simplifies to 4 pi over 5. So this is the one we're going to need for A. I'm going to do the, uh, the minus 1, which relates to B here as well. If we take pi over 2 for the other identity and subtract 3 pi over 10, uh, we get again 5 pi over 10 minus 3 pi over 10 is 2 pi over 10 which reduces to pi over 5. So this is the one we're going to need for the B example here. So back to the A one. So it is, um, it's, if you add the, the 3 pi over 10 to pi over 2, you get 4 pi over 5. So the, uh, what we have here then is the, um, the x angle is the 3 pi over 10. So this is the 3 pi over 10 here, and then the x is the 3 pi over 10. So in, in this calculation up here, we found that if we add 3 pi over 10 and pi over 2, you get 4 pi over 5. So this says that the secant of 4 pi over 5 is equal to, and notice it's the negative of the cosecant of 3 pi over 10. So these two quantities are related that the decimal part's the same, but they're just the opposite sign.
and we could write it like that as well. So this must equal negative 1.2361 approximately. Now, for the B example, the secant of pi over 5 is what we're looking for. And if we take 3 pi over 10, this angle here, and subtract it from pi over 2, and I'll turn my pen back on, this is the 3 pi over 10. And this is the 3 pi over 10 here in place of cos again. So they are equivalent because this simplifies to the secant. Uh, when you uh, again when you subtract pi over 2 and 3 pi over 10 you get pi over 5. So the cosecant of 3 pi over 10 and the secant of pi over 5 must be exactly the same. So if this one's 1.2361 to four decimal places then this must, one must be exactly the same. So they are the same including the sign. And that's the end of the lesson.